Day five of camp and the Broncos suffered their first major injury. We'll have an update on wide receiver Tim Patrick. Plus, it was the first day in pads. We'll hear from Pat Sertan the second, plus an interview with offensive guard Ben Powers. That's coming up next on Broncos Camp Daily. Thank you for joining us for Broncos Camp Daily. I am Phil Milani, pleased to be joined by former offense alignment Orlando Franklin, plus the Hall of Famer Steve hey, Atwater. Hey. Orlando, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, fellas. Really appreciate it. Kind of a sad day around here. Uh, we saw Tim Patrick go down again. Uh, Sean Payton, after practice, said that it looks like they're evaluating his left Achilles. It looked like he just slipped on the route, Orlando. What did you see out there? Yeah, it looked like he just slipped, and at first, it, like his feet were underneath him, and then that, after that, you noticed that he kind of threw the ball away, and he stayed down for a little bit longer. So, you hate it. Tim Patrick's been working his butt off for the past year, trying to get back from that ACL, and now this is something new. Yeah, super frustrating for a guy to work as hard as he's worked, and uh, we were looking for such big things from him again this year, and uh, just another setback for him. But you know, knowing the heart that he has, and uh, you know, all the support that he has from his uh, teammates and coaches. Uh, I think he'll he'll make it through it, but it's going to be a long journey. Mm. Uh, you know, most people I think immediately will think, hey, he, he's trying to come back too early or, or whatnot. But uh, head coach Sean Payton said, no, he was fully cleared. He's good to go out there. But maybe sometimes that happens when you have a, a knee injury, you're sort of overcompensating on the other, other side. Yeah, and that's exactly right, Phil, right? You, you sit there, you have some kind of injury, and now it's all about that injury, right? It's about strengthening that quad, making sure you have the flexibility, making sure you have the mobility, the mobility as well, where all of a sudden you forget about the left leg, and you're not doing the same exact things. And when you're running, as far as a guy like Tim Patrick, running in the routes, breaking down, cutting, all these different things, he's going to be thinking about that right ACL, that right knee. And now you forget about other things, and you might be stepping a certain way to make sure to take some pressure off of that knee, and all of a sudden something else happens in that leg. So it's very unfortunate, but that's how injuries work. Yeah, but here's what Sean Payne had to say after practice. It's always difficult. Yeah, you guys see it. Um, you know, especially a guy like that who's a leader who, who's coming off, you know, pretty much a, an entire year of rehabilitation. And so it's difficult for his teammates, for all of us. So um, maybe hopefully we get some good news, but it appears, uh, it appears it's his left Achilles. And guys, today was the first day in pads out there. The intensity uh, went up just a little bit. Uh, for an offensive lineman, you got to like that when the pads come on, right? Absolutely. And all eyes for me were on one-on-ones with offensive line and defensive line, right? Because we didn't get to see that last year. I want to see the physicality of this team. And the Broncos will win or lose games this year because of the offensive line and defensive line. So you got to let those big boys eat. It was nice to see the one-on-one -on -one reps. It was nice to see them come together in team and let those guys really double team and get off on linebackers. And, and you could tell the identity of this football team is going to be to run the football. Yeah, well, we, I was looking at exactly the opposite of you. I was looking at the defensive backs, uh, and they look like this is going to be a lot of fun. Of course, Pastor Tan is going to be doing his thing. Damari Mathis looks like he's going to be amazing. And uh, I like to see the cornerbacks especially show that physicality at the line of scrimmage when they're jamming guys up because that throws the receiver's timing off, and the quarterback has to pat and pat the ball, and that gives us a chance to get uh, more sacks. So uh, looking for great things from the entire defense, but uh, folks on the secondary today, I was impressed. You know, a cornerback is only an athletic version version of an offensive lineman, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Because, you know, they got to use their hands, right, and kind of usher those wide receivers to the sideline. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that you guys would watch it. Yeah, your old positions. Come on, man. Uh, what do you think about PS2, though, uh, Orlando, man? Uh, he says that uh, he doesn't get too much into those rankings, but is he the best cornerback uh, in football? Um, I, I'm not going to give him that title yet, okay. uh, but I'm going to tell you that he is certainly top three in the National Football League, right? Um, last year, we saw him go out there week in, week out and absolutely dominate. This year, I want to see if he could travel now. 
like, hey, you know, week one, you got Devontae Adams, are you going to travel with Devontae Adams, whether he's on the left side of the field or the right side of the field? Then week two, what are you going to do against that game? Does he take away everybody's wide receiver number one every single week? I think he is top three, but I also think he has the ability now to become the number one cornerback, but by doing that, where he is traveling each and every week. And if he does that, obviously, you know, yes, as a player, you never want to pay attention to the rankings, but he will be the one, number one cornerback in the National Football So game. many people make up this big thing about the best cornerback traveling with the best receivers. I think it, it, it actually makes your defense weaker. Uh, because now you got, you know, the, the, you have to make different adjustments. I think it's best if you can stay on one side and maybe you may lean a safety to help that uh, corner who may be not be not as good as good as uh, Pastor Tan or somebody of his caliber. But um, I think it's too much placed on that. Uh, mm. I like corners who can stay with whatever side they're on and play that particular side. But that's just that's the way I grew up. No. Difference in uh, philosophies there for sure. Uh, here's what PS2 had to say about the rankings in the NFL. Of course, I'm looking at myself as the best, but you know what I mean? I ain't going to try to, you know, get into the politics, get into all the rankings and stuff. You know, I'm just playing my game, you know what I mean? And sharpen my tools every day, sharpen my skill set and make sure, you know, I keep on getting better each and every week, you know? And, you know, that's, what, that's my main focus, just getting better for the team you know, and focusing on that. The guys, he also has those pads on where yes. one side it says yeah. PS and then the other side's a controller. Uh, they didn't have that when you guys played, huh? No. Oh, man, that's <laughs> so cool the stuff that they have nowadays, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want a 74. I would, I would, I don't even need all of that. Give me like a 74 <laughs> thigh pad and I'm good to go. Yeah. yeah. He's got those PlayStation cleats on too, so uh, he's uh, clearly ready to go this year, uh, year three already for Pat Sertan the second. Uh, let's go back down field level and check in with Sidney Jones. Thanks, Phil. We're here with guard at Ben Powers. Ben, you know, first padded practice, first glimpse of this, how good this team can be. Overall, what do you think about practice today? I think it was a great starting point. You know, we're coming into the start of week two. We're all getting on the same page, getting our minds right together. That chemistry starting to build and we could feel it growing. You know, Mike McGlinchey was back out at practice today. Now that this offensive line is kind of getting in the groove, how do you feel about y'all's chemistry out there? I think it's great and, and it's only going to grow from here. So we're at a great starting point. Ben, of course, you work very closely with Garrett Bowles, and you know it's great to see him back out there, of course, after suffering his leg injury during the season and working on that this offseason. What have you really seen from him? Garrett's a great player. He's a great <laughs> professional, and he has his mind in the right spot, and we're ready to go get after it. You know, first real chance to compete against this defensive line. What are your thoughts on them, You know, DJ Jones, Zach Allen? I think they're great. I think they're great. It's great competition. You always want that in camp You know, um, so you could grow. I love it. Ben, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Phil, we'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, Sydney. Uh, let's dive in a little bit more. Uh, oh, you brought up the offensive line a little bit earlier. They brought in, brought in Mike McGlinchey, uh, Ben Powers this offseason. You think that it's revamped, ready to go? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Mike McGlinchey is one of the top right tackles in the league. He's top 10 easily at that position. But also what you get when you bring in a Mike McGlinchey is you get the coaching that he's been in with Chris Forster, offensive line coach with the San Francisco 49ers, who is arguably one of the best offensive line coaches to ever coach off offensive line in NFL history. So you get a guy that's smart, that has played in a, smart, a system where you have to be smart, and now you get a guy that can solidify that position that has been open since uh, 2013, the last time I played it. So um, really looking forward to that, but Ben Powers is the guy that I cannot wait to see. He's an earth mover. We know that we want to run the football, and the Broncos are going to run the football. So every third and one this year, look for them to be running behind big number 74. <laughs> uh, sure. Like they did back in the day. That's right, that's right. <laughs> He's a man of very few words, uh, as you could tell there uh, from his interview. But uh, that's the way that offensive linemen are. Huh? They're kind of just the, the nitty gritty. Yes, yes. They're, they're the nitty gritty. Uh, I, I don't think you can have a good football team if your offensive line isn't great. I think it all starts with the offensive line. I think that, you know, not that they were the weakest link of the team the last few years, but, uh, you know, certainly the improvements are going to help us, uh, you know, protect Russell Wilson, run the ball more effectively and score more points, which is what every good team does. Russell Wilson sacked 55 times last year, so uh, all of that uh, will help him. Also good to see Mike McGlinchey back out there. Uh, missed the first few days of camp uh, with a death in his family, so uh, uh, good to see him back. Uh, Orlando, how you been, man? Uh, you look great. You look fit. Uh, thanks for coming on. You been doing well? Yeah, I've been doing awesome. Just really enjoying them. dad life. You know, I have a five-year-old that's learning how to play hockey using Hockey One, and then my two-and-a-half-year-old is learning how to ice skate right now. Wow. So just really enjoying you know, 
doing my stuff in the media, but I'm getting home as soon as possible, come 3.30 to do whatever the kids want to do. And, you know, I live to be a father, so it's been awesome. Oh, that's great, man. Good to hear uh, that you're having so much success uh, post-career. So uh, thank you so much for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having appreciate me. You, you'd be a DB it. nowadays, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there right, there we go. Everybody yeah, will know my name. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, I'm going to lock it down for you. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us. For Steve Atwater and Orlando Franklin, I am Phil Milani. This has been Broncos Camp Daily.